when it comes to robots. The comedy is so dated and potentially bad, depending on what you like, that it can pretty much take away any positive thing you could say about this film. So to summarize the film, Charlie and Lane aren't good people. It's 2032 and both of them use robots in order to circumvent any type of work they would have to do in order to progress in their professional lives or in their personal lives. For Elaine, for example, she doesn't like having to have sex with men in order to get nice things. So she has a robot who does the sex part while she enjoys being wine, dine, and getting gifts, specifically pocketbooks, which she's quite addicted to. For Charlie, he has his robot not only handle the dating part, but also handle working outside the home. And all that Charlie has to do is pretty much have sex with women after his duplicate does all the work. This goes well for both of them for a while until they meet each other, that is the original Charlie and Elaine, and they try to work each other as usual. Charlie sends out C2, which is his duplicate. Elaine goes on dates and enjoys all the gifts, whining and dining. But then when it comes for the night of having sex, Charlie gets his schedule mixed up. And instead of sending C2 to the work event, he shows up to the work event. And Elaine, of course, sends E2, her duplicate, to have sex. And because E2 and C2 have sex and they enjoy it and they kind of form a bond with each other, they decide to rebel against the originals. This is a major problem because laws have been passed where human beings aren't supposed to have duplicates of themselves, specifically robots. So with that in mind, these two are forced to try to figure out a way to get their robots back, who are now becoming sentient beings, and try not to get killed, try not to get framed for murder. And as you can imagine, these two who aren't always the sharpest tools in the toolbox going against AI robots. It leads to some comical moments, some dangerous situations, and it's hard to say at times whether or not the originals may end up getting replaced by the duplicates. So as for why robots is rated R, cussing throughout, this comical violence, when it comes to Jack Har when it comes to Jack Whitehall, you will see his behind multiple times and him damn near nude. And of course, this drinking. So when it comes to the review portion, the highlight of this film is definitely Woodley and Whitehall's chemistry. And that's because whether you're talking about the two robot sides, versions of them that are in love, or it's the humans who are having sarcastic back and forths, while you won't be laughing out loud or, be, or get butterflies in your stomach, at the very least, it gives you a sense of hope. Like it pushes you to wonder, maybe think, maybe like the movie Duel, that E2 and C2 may try to make a way to take over Elaine and Charlie's life in a way that's compelling. And that maybe, rather than this being the kind of film that just is instantly good or catches you in the first 10 or so minutes, maybe it's a wood burning oven type of thing where you have to let it get good in order for you to enjoy it. Unfortunately though, this is not that kind of movie. Robots has this weird kind of comedy that tries to tap into Republican-esque humor as it talks about robots taking over as immigration is officially stopped going into the U.S. And it's very awkward because it kind of tries to walk the line between not taking on Republican talking points fully to the point of getting to that offensive side, yet it still wants to make it clear that robots are these beings that are taking jobs, are lowering their salary for human beings, and it's it's weird. It's trying to be political, maybe talk about the future of things when robots are put online, yet at the same time it's trying to use modern talking points of Republicans, particularly the more extreme, like illegal aliens versus undocumented immigrants type, and it just doesn't often work. And even when you go beyond that and try to make jokes about Charlie being this privileged kid who's lazy and lacks skills, then you have his friends who are either playing the fat, goofy person or the nerd who's very creepy. It doesn't work. A lot of it feels dated and maybe something that could be funny or even acceptable in the 70s or 80s. But at this point, even if you're not somebody that is a feminist, 
or woke for lack of a better term, it's still the type of stuff that it just makes it feel like they're not trying that hard. The final topic just deals with the lack of utilization when it comes to Shailene Woodley and it begins with just Elaine is established to us to be some kind of gold digger. Yet as time goes on, there's little things reveal like she used to work at a company that makes robots and that's how she met the person who made her duplicate. And while it's not clear what she specifically did, I think she was an engineer, but maybe an office worker, I would like to believe that she didn't just get the job because she's attractive, but she actually had something on her resume that made her appealing to have in this role as even office manager, administrative, whatever. So not tapping to that was one issue. To follow that up, we then have, when her and Charlie are on the run, they have to go to a log cabin in order to hide out for a bit. And one of the things that was very curious is that despite the whole gold digger perception, which you usually know comes with being prissy, not able to do much besides be pretty, yada, yada, yada. Elaine is starting fires. Or she's chopping wood or gathering wood and cooking and all this other stuff. So it's like, why was there no effort to reconcile the perception of what a gold digger is with who Elaine is and maybe try to make it a bit more complicated in terms of maybe that after dealing with all this sexual harassment and all that from guys or something like that, that's why she decided to take this route or something to just make this film deeper than what it is. Because while you can tell that there is some desire to give some type of meager message when it comes to this film, it's so weak and forgettable that it almost makes you wonder when they was reading the script for this, what was it that popped out to them that made them think like, I need to sign on to this? Because after watching it, I can't imagine with Whitley's filmography thus far, she's really trying to be in some sexualized getup for a laugh. Overall, when it comes to robots, it's definitely the kind of film that actors don't promote or talk about for they know it isn't good. It's just they didn't realize it wasn't good until they already committed to the project and were stuck in a contract.